All right, so a few other examples to do on the back side of the notes. Um, I'm going to try and pick one of each type. Um, let's start with, for example, number one. We're missing this side length here. And when you're approaching these problems, you want to find out if you're missing a leg or a hypotenuse. And I like to do that by simply labeling the side lengths with the A, B, and C. Uh, first one identifies, where we should identify is the hypotenuse, because it's different from the legs entirely. So this is going to be my C. Now the A and B don't matter. So it could be X, it could be 10, you know, for A or for B, respectively. So I'm just going to choose B for X and A for 10 and plug my values into the equation. So I'm going to rewrite Pythagorean's theorem here. Plug in for A, 10. B we're solving for, so we're going to leave it as B squared. And then C is going to be 11 squared. Now to solve for B squared, I need to evaluate 10 squared first, which is 100. I'm going to evaluate 100, or sorry, um, 11 squared, which could be 121. And now solving for B squared, you're going to do the inverse of addition and subtract 100 from both sides. Get B squared equals 21. Next step, to get rid of the power of 2, you square root both sides. Now, 21 is not a perfect square, so you're going to have to round it. I'm say nearest hundredth, and we're going to get 4.58, and the units are miles. So, just to recap here, plug or knit label your side lengths A, B, and C. Start with C as your hypotenuse and then plug the values in and solve for the missing variable. Uh, let's look at an example with some radicals in it, which may be um, new to some of you, but these are still just numbers. They just look a little bit different. They involve a radical, a square root symbol. We still square it the regular way, just can try a little bit differently. Uh, in some ways it's easier because the square and the square root will cancel out, and I'll show that to you right now. Um, first label your A, B, and C. So leg, leg, hypotenuse, it's across from the right angle. And let's write our equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is going to be 2 root 3. 2 root 3 together is the number. So 2 root 3, the entire number gets squared here. Plus b squared, which we don't know, so we'll leave it as b squared. And then equals square root of 13 squared. Zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> now, when you square this, I'm going to go off to the side here. No, let's move down here. When you square something like 2 root 3, remember that when you have two numbers that are multiplying together, and there's a power of 2, what happens here is that a gets to the power of 2 and b gets to the power of 2. So in this case, 2 is going to be squared as well as the square root of 3 is going to be squared. So this power goes to both the 2 and it goes to the square root of 3. So 2 squared is going to be 4. The square root of 3 squared is going to be 3. Makes sense because these two cancel out the square and the square root. 4 times 3 is going to be 12. So moving back up here, I'm just going to write it for you. It's going to be 4 times 3, because of the explanation below, below, plus b squared equals, here you have the square root of 13 squared, the square root and the power of 2 cancel out to 13. So we're going to evaluate 4 times 3 and get 12. And then from there you subtract 12 from both sides, the inverse of addition. b squared equals 1. Square root both sides, b equals one mile. Now you'll notice that in the equation we talked about before, when you square root both sides, you're supposed to write a plus or a minus, uh, and then the, the square root of the number that you just square rooted in the equation. However, in this case, you're talking about side length, so there's really no reason to actually write down the plus or minus because you can't have a negative side length. So we're only going to take the principal root or the positive root for any of the square roots we do in these equation solving examples. Let's do one more example of a root. Uh, 